Uh, not very good stuff. So it <clears throat> seems to be a bit offset, but well, maybe we can live with that. Uh, are any of you familiar with web development in general? Do you know HTML5? Couple? Okay, so I'll, I'll walk it through quickly. So uh, I'm, I'm from Symbio. I'm uh, the head of web and app, app stuff that we do. Uh, we're about 1,200 people located mainly in, in Finland and China. Uh, also some presence here in the United States. Uh, so okay, uh, regarding uh, the AGL demonstrator, I thought that I'd walk through HTML5 quickly and then kind of dive into the uh, demonstrator itself. So what is HTML5? Uh, by definition, it's just an extension to the HTML5 markup, and it's a goal for long-term development, uh, kind of a more iterative model than HTML has been previously. In practice, however, when people talk about HTML5, they usually reference to the additions to HTML5, uh, I mean HTML spec, also the new JavaScript APIs that it, it provides, maybe CSS3 uh, kind of styling uh, additions, and maybe even WebGL. So it's more like a kind of web two dot something was a couple of years ago that this is maybe dot three or, or four or whatever. So uh, kind of a modern web application development. The reality, of course, uh, is that there is a lot of diversity. So if someone has been doing Android development and thinks that's difficult, then this adds a few. So basically, you have a lot of different input mechanisms. You, uh, you have touch, you have mouse, you might have voice. Uh, it can be anything. Uh, different screen sizes, different screen resolutions. Uh, different browsers even. Uh, then you have a kind of evolution of devices. So basically, for example, from Android landscape, you have a lot of different feature sets that are supported throughout the life cycle. Uh, different CPUs, you have to design the UI so that they are quick enough on lower end devices. And then you have higher end devices that you might want to utilize a bit kind of uh, better feature set. And also hardware acceleration support on, on different uh, CSS uh, transitions, for example, might be different. So uh, quite a lot of things, but then also quite a lot of uh, opportunities. And of course, when talking about the automotive uh, landscape, you, you don't have to target as many devices. You can just target hard one hardware, so you don't have to actually worry about this. But the good thing is. Uh, there is actually a lot that it provides you out of the box, so you don't have to worry about the underlying stuff. It's already built for real time. You have web sockets. There is two-way two communication between devices. You can build peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, webcam chats if you want. Uh, there is a lot of kind of uh, stuff that is already given. Also, you can write once and, and get many. Uh, we wrote the AGL demonstrator so that it works on mobile phones, it works on tablets, it works on desktop, and it works in the car. So quite a kind of lot of different types of things, not just web. Uh, low barrier to entry. Uh, don't have to be a domain specialist. You just have to be somewhat familiar with web development to, to get going. And what HTML5 adds uh, maybe most of all is that it's just it's not only online anymore. So you have offline apps, you have standalone apps. It's just an app framework, basically. You have a lot of options to interact with the device, you file system API, local databases, different kinds, app cache for offline, uh, offline assets, and so forth. And also, it offers quite a lot of tools for handling the diversity that comes with it. You have uh, feature detection libraries, uh, which are open source. Uh, when it goes to styling, there are kind of a lot of features that, that are still uh, kind of experimental, and you need to have prefixes in them. You have tools to kind of accompany with that and so forth. So there's a good community and a good drive going forward. And uh, kind of a lot of stuff is coming up, so you don't have to kind of limit to kind of simple UIs and uh, business type of applications. But you can do WebGL, 
CSS shaders add a lot of kind of functionality. So basically, CSS shaders are OpenGL ES uh, shaders that you can apply on, on web elements. You have canvas that you can draw on, uh, audio input and output, video, different kind of sensor data. So a lot of stuff that is basically becoming a standard and you can access from the browser. The bad thing is that still it's quite new technology, so you have need to tweak up quite a bit. So uh, like mentioned, there are prefixes for different, uh, for example, CSS features. You need to handle the feature support, and you have to degrade gracefully uh, and take into account the kind of low, lowest end device that you want the main use cases to work with, and then build from there. And uh, there are not a lot of established best practices to do this, so a lot of trial and error and kind of reinventing the wheel, unfortunately, at this point. And uh, also, you need to know a bit about what happens under the hood in, in, in the browser, especially for mobile. Because, uh, well, mobiles have usually the least processing power. So when, when, it's, uh, when you're building something high-end, uh, you need to take the advantage of that properly. That's a kind of something that usually app developers shouldn't have to think about. So it's a bit of a shame at the moment. But we're getting it there. And also good performance uh, requires memory management. You have to understand how to handle inputs. Uh, you, have, you have to understand what is hardware accelerated, how, how, how things need to be done to get, it, get them fast. But I mean, it's, we're getting there. It's not, not that far away. Okay, so then uh, to the HVAC demo, I guess. Uh, I'll grab some water. So I'm not an automotive developer. Actually, I don't even know anything about Tizen. That's something that I probably shouldn't have told, but uh, the point is that you don't have to. It's all standard. So basically, what we built is a standard web app. It doesn't have to care about Tizen. It doesn't have to care about being in a car. It's just a standard web application. We have a couple of guys developing it. For the UI part, I was the only one doing it. Uh, basically, we're doing it uh, as a side project along our, everything else. and. Uh, also with a 10 hour time zone difference so it quite nice progress i would say and fairly fairly complex uh, integration landscape in this sense so we have a lot of kind of different uh, communication me methods inside the car and outside it and, and, and given the kind of circumstances i, I think it's worked out qu quite well so uh, the result is uh, the car HVAC interface with a uh, real-time web room, remote, and it's uh, interfacing with the CAN bus. Uh, this unfortunately looks bad, but it doesn't matter. Uh, so basically, we have the vehicle app. Uh, have you seen it already? OK, uh, we'll show it to you downstairs. So basically, uh, it's an HVAC UI uh, with uh, fan speed, temperature, uh, that kind of things. Uh, we have the same, exactly the same app as a mobile and desktop app, so you have a remote to the car. You can take your mobile and uh, adjust stuff in the car. And it's shared code, so nothing is changed. The same stuff is on the phone as it in, is in the car. It's not only similar, it's exactly the same, because we didn't have the opportunity to kind of start forking and, and uh, kind of adjusting, and it would have been a really big integration problem. The only difference is that the web app uh, that is running uh, on the mobile, it's talking in web sockets to the web backend, uh, so you have two-way connection. So whenever you change anything in the car, it actually changes on the mobile. And on the backend, with the Exosense, we're talking with JSON RPC. So basically, the web backend is a proxy for the JSON RPC interface. So our vehicle app is uh, W3C standard package app, it has a config XML file, icon file, and static assets. So standard stuff, nothing uh, specific in, in this use case. It doesn't care that it's run on Tizen. Uh, it's based, it's HTML5, JavaScript, and CSS3. And uh, JSON RPC integration is done with jQuery AJAX request, so quite simple. Web app, same thing, only difference is that it's uh, using web sockets, uh, socket IO there on the on the back end. Uh, 
basically uh, yeah, nothing special here. Uh, on the back end, we're using RESTler for the REST communication that we're doing uh, with jQuery in the UI. Works on all WebKit-based browsers. It's not optimized for different screens, but you can use it on iPhone, uh, iPad, Android phones. Uh, so for communication, I just mentioned those. Uh, uh, one problem in the car is that since we don't have a web server that we, we could listen to uh, the JSON RPC uh, notifications, we have to actually pull it, which is a bit nasty, but that was during the, well, we had to do it in this time frame. Otherwise, the kind of web backend side is, is real time and listening to events, so that's kind of a bit smarter solution. Uh, about graphics and performance, so we draw basically all of the graphics on canvas, so it scales. Uh, transitions done, done in CSS3 because that's the best way to get performance out of it. It's hard, hardware accelerated. Uh, there are a couple of pictures which are the icons that are unfortunately designed by me. You, you will see that I'm not an icon designer. So, uh, but they are written already also, so if you have a high, high definition screen, uh, they should look good, good on that as well. Uh, just a quick end note that uh, when interfacing with touch devices, please, please don't use clicking because that will introduce ex uh, extra lag to the UI. <coughs> but that's about it. Any, any questions on, on the UI side of things? Oh, that bad. Huh? <laughs> Oh, thank you. Uh, if you. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me or send me an email.